Good morning. Uh, last week in our New City Catechism, we looked at the uniqueness of Jesus as the second person of the Trinity. Uh, hearkening back to a video that we recorded early on, looking at the idea of the Trinity more broadly. Uh, this week is a little odd in that the, the answer to this week's question is going to be fleshed out in the, in the coming two weeks. Uh, so let me get into the question and answer and I'll explain what I mean. Question 21. What sort of redeemer is needed to bring us back to God? The answer. One who is truly human and also truly God. In the passage, Isaiah 9, 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Uh, The reason why this week is a little more difficult to dig into is because uh, over the next two weeks, we're going to ask why is it important that the Redeemer be truly human and also truly God? So we're going to get into both aspects of, of this week's answer in the coming two weeks. So I thought what would be helpful for our consideration this week is what other religions say about Jesus. Going back to even the earliest heresies around Jesus, really at their heart, and this is probably an oversimplification, but at their heart, these these heresies um, fall into one of two errors. Either they say that Jesus is truly human, but not fully divine, or he is divine, but not fully human? And the answer of this week is the Redeemer needs to be a Redeemer who is truly human and truly God. Now, heresies take other shapes in terms of how they understand the Trinity and things like that, but at their core, it is a misunderstanding of one of two sides of this aspect. And we see that even in other world religions today. And just a a note, um, it is interesting to me that there are religions that predate Jesus' incarnation. When Mary gave birth to Jesus, the virgin birth, uh, there are religions that existed before that that have now accounted for Jesus in their uh, understanding of who God is and how God acts. So there, there are ancient religions that reckon with Jesus, look at Jesus, recognize that he was unique as we considered last week and have added him into their religious texts or their religious texts moving forward from there have, have accounted for him because of who he was. Now, they fall into one of these two errors of not saying he is truly human or not saying he is truly God. They, they Pick one or the other, but even current religions, world religions, fall into these errors and have something to say about Jesus. So we're going to briefly consider Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, and Buddhism. There are certainly others that we could talk about, Mormons and Jehovah's Witness, but I thought it would be helpful just to focus on these these four world religions. So starting with Islam. Uh, what does it, is Islam have to say about Jesus? Um, one of the, re- the primary religious texts of Islam is the Quran. Um, and throughout the Quran, some of the things that you will see, uh, Jesus was born of a virgin. Uh, he, there was a virgin birth. Uh, Jesus was maybe unique in that way, even in Islam, but born of a virgin. Um, he was a person to be revered. He was someone to be honored Uh, but was not God. And this gets into the next point. He is a prophet of Allah. He is a prophet of God in the same vein as Muhammad. Um, But as a prophet, he is not God. They deny the deity of Jesus. They deny his personhood in the Trinity. They deny the Trinity. Um, They say that Jesus is a wise teacher, a miracle worker, and that he will come again. Uh, Islam acknowledges Jesus will return in the future during the latter days. 
The Hadith, a collection of sayings from Muhammad, describes this second coming of Jesus. While Muslims acknowledge the second coming, they maintain Jesus will return as a Muslim and as a follower of Muhammad, returning to earth to revive Islam. You see, what's interesting in in Islam is not only is Jesus not God, he is subservient to Muhammad. He will come back and follow Muhammad. Who Jesus is, he's supposed to be honored, but he is not the primary figure of their religion. Muhammad is in many ways. And so we see them denying the deity of Jesus. He is not God according to Islam and is one who will follow Muhammad. Judaism is another interesting one in that it it shares, in the same way Islam does, it shares some background with Christianity. Some of the Old Testament texts that we hold to, uh, Judaism holds to. So what does Judaism say about Jesus? A um, few things. One, Jesus was Mary's son. So historically, Jesus was born to Mary. Um, he was a teacher, a rabbi. He had followers. There were people who chose to follow Jesus, disciples who who pursued life with Jesus and, and modeled their lives after his. He was respected. They even acknowledged that he was a miracle worker, that, that he performed miracles, that he, uh, some of the things that we see accounted for in the New Testament, Jews would say, yes, Jesus did those things. He was a miracle worker. And this is where they get hung up. He claimed to be the Messiah. So Jews will deny that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the son of God, come to redeem people, to reconcile people back to God. They'll acknowledge that he was crucified, and they'll acknowledge that people claimed he rose again, but they will uh, generally deny that he actually rose again, that he was the Messiah, that he is the Son of God, and in fact, he is hung on the cross by Jews because of his statements, his claim that he is the Son of God. And that is what they point to as saying he deserves to die because of this heresy. So Jews, too, deny an aspect of who Christ is. They acknowledge many things about him. They, they acknowledge the historical reality of Jesus, but deny the deity. Uh, two, two religions that are sometimes similar and in many ways very different, uh, Hinduism and Buddhism. Uh, in Hinduism, uh, the, the sacred texts being the Vedas and the Upanishads, they will, they will claim that Jesus was a holy man. He was a wise teacher. He had moral things to teach us. And they will say he is a God. Hinduism is a polytheistic religion, believing in many gods, not just a God or one God. So Jesus is one among many. Some Hindus may even say that he wasn't a historical figure, but is simply kind of the perfect example of what we can attain. And so denying his his historical reality. But, but the other error that Hinduism makes is that Jesus is not the only way to salvation or to perfection. He is maybe a way among many, but not the way. And so uh, it goes against what we see in scripture about the nature and person of Jesus. Uh, Buddhism, similarly in their their text, the suttas and the sutras, Jesus was an enlightened man, the ideal of what we aim at, according to Buddhism, a wise teacher, a holy man, Um, but not the way to God, probably not even a God, depending on who you ask. It's Buddhism and Hinduism both get a little uh, tricky as there are a lot of iterations of both of those religions. And so how they view Jesus will change potentially from person to person, if not from group to group. So in summary, uh, Muslims believe Jesus was born of a virgin, is to be revered, is to be respected, was a prophet, a wise teacher who worked miracles, ascended to heaven and will come again, but deny his deity and make him subservient to Muhammad. Jews believe Jesus was Mary's son, a teacher or a rabbi. He had disciples, was respected, performed miracles. He claimed to be the Messiah and was crucified. 
and also acknowledge that his disciples reported that he rose from the dead, but deny these things about him. They, they deny the resurrection. They deny Christ as the Messiah and are in many ways still looking for the Messiah to come. Hindus and Buddhists both believe Jesus was holy or enlightened, a wise teacher, and is a kind of deity, but not the deity, not the God. And so they they don't say that he is the only way to salvation. They They deny parts of his nature and parts of who God has revealed himself to be. Uh, there, there is, in, in pushing back against the heresies that were, were coming up around Jesus, there is a, a something called the Chalcedonian definition uh, surrounding the nature and person of Christ that I think is, is helpful. I'm going to read it here. It says, We then, following the Holy Fathers, all with one consent, teach men to confess one and the same Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the same perfect in Godhead and also perfect in manhood, truly God and truly man, of a reasonable, rational soul and body, consubstantial with the Father according to the Godhead and consubstantial with us according to the manhood, in all things like unto us without sin begotten, in all things like unto us without sin, begotten before all ages of the Father according to the Godhead, and in these latter days for us and for our salvation, born of the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, according to the manhood, one and the same Christ, Son, Lord, only begotten, to be acknowledged in two natures, without confusion, without change, without division, without separation, the distinction of natures being by no means taken away by the union, but rather the property of each nature being preserved and concurring in one person and in one subsistence, not parted or divided into two persons, but one and the same Son and only begotten God, the Word, the Lord Jesus Christ, as the prophets from the beginning have declared concerning him, and the Lord Jesus Christ himself has taught us, and the creed of the Holy Fathers has been handed down to us. You see, this statement affirms what Scripture says about Jesus in contrast to all of these world religions that we've considered, in contrast to the early church heresies, and it affirms uh, what Jesus says in John 14, 6. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace.